filled with stories and testimonies that showcase God's hand in man. When we need encouragement in long suffering, we look to Job or Joseph. When we need to learn about rising in obedience and about supernatural favor, we look to Esther. And ultimately to grow in our character, we look to Jesus. But there's another category of characters that you know teach us a thing or two about God, us. Our lives are living Bibles to those who are around and about us. In this film, we're gonna explore the life of someone whom by grace can teach us a thing or two about diligence, surrender, and love. I didn't watch cartoons, those things children watch. I didn't grow up liking them. Strangely, I would be drawn to bebop, black American jazz music, and then also listen with my dad to highlight music. So my dad and I would sit down morning to night, apart from playing soccer and maybe some other thing, I'll sit with my dad listening to Jim Rex Lawson, Young Henshaw, from morning till night, just listening to music. There was a man who was very close to our family, a police sergeant, you know, didn't go to school but could read the Bible. Interestingly, he couldn't read any other thing but could read the Bible. Supernatural. The first man I saw raise the dead in front of me. I mean, my cousin had, she was living with a, a family friend, they hit her, she just collapsed and passed out. They rushed her to the house, she was gone. And um, we were crying, my dad was crying. Hey, what kind of sadness want to befall my family? Oh my God. Oh my God. Don't oh like this. My goodness. And I wake up. Has anybody gone to call Elder ahead of your yes, house? Mercy has no mercy! Oh God, what kind of sadness? Oh my God. Oh, yes. his name. Yes. My God. Oh, his name. The devil has come. Oh his name oh is wonderful. Yeah. I know his name. AJ Basi. Welcome, sir. Welcome. What happened? One of her cousins, out of anger, battered her and, 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 and beat, beat, her, beat, her, beat the hell out of her. And she just fell and died. She no die. She no die. She no fi die. She no fi die. It's sadness for my family. Bible don't say we no go die. We go live to fulfill what God call us for. What be her name? Eno. 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 Her name. Yes. Yes. My God. My God. Eno, wake up. Eno, I say rise. Jesus. My God. My God. Now God, now end one. Thank you, Jesus. Now God. If you did read this Bible, you get some things from God that they show you. I greet, greet the elder. You've not greeted me. Good evening, my Peke. How are you doing? <sighs> okay. So, you saw this, and I actually brought it from, for you from then church. We got the trumpet for the church. And from the first day, I, I was blowing it. No, 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 no. This way, this way, this way. So hold it, hold it. Yes. You say that you're picking? Yes, Nathaniel was. You name that Nathaniel? Yes. This ah, what is you born your own at the keep? Now this picking, now in God, show me for dream. Oh, yeah? Now this picking, you know, as in come, come collect this, uh, what do you call them again? Trumpet, trumpet. Uh, as in come, come collect them. Now I remember dream we go show me about him. He in carry in car. You know all this kind of car where they travel, they go Lagos, they go Kano. Yes, yes. He carry in own car. Now so in own car begin to, they pass all of them viam, viam, viam. Wow. This begin go go far in life. Amen. And they tell you as God just, you know I think God come now just remember as God show me exactly now him, God show me. Hmm? Come make a pray for you, my Peking. Come make a pray for you. Hmm? You will go far in life. You will bring blessing to this your family, this Basi family. Hmm? And they talk for your papa front. And as a small boy, no encounter with God. I knew there was something special about Elder Ihe. When he's speaking, I'll go stay very close to him so that his saliva will touch me. Of course, prophecy does not come to pass automatically. Just like Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, he says to him, I give you this command in keeping with the prophecies that have already been spoken about you, that in recalling them, you may fight the battle well. 
essentially contend that it comes to pass. Let's see how it plays out in this particular life. So he gave those prophetic words and I began to play the trumpet. I, I, I grew up from the Apostolic Church, then moved to Trem. Then I was you know, ordained in 1998 as a minister. Then I was led to go to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, City of David. Now, while all of this was going on, I began to be involved in mainstream music. I'm doing gigs with the guys, I'm in secular bands. You know, so you practice for hours. So I just wanted to be a good musician, travel the world with bands, go to Berkeley School. Guys, guess what? He got accepted into Berkeley University. Berkeley! <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to go to America and then my pastor, Pastor Esco, would call me to his office. I mean, all of this time, I never really had an encounter with God. <clears throat> said, Nathaniel, Nathaniel, do you know that any time I hear you play these trumpets in your hand, tears always come to my eyes. And that's because there is a sound of God inside of you that opens us up into the heavens when we worship. I know you are not an ordinary person. So that's why my eyes are on you. No, we don't wait for that. I don't know where you are. Why do you laugh? No, we don't wait for this. Where is the person that will see for this church? Then I'll go to the music room. I'll tell my guys. I say, imagine this pastor. Pastor say there's something about me so that I will die in this church. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. And then your children in America, you say, mm, I'll just make fun of this. Yeah, and he kept saying that. He said, say, I don't know what is it about this trumpet you are playing, and I'm crying. I'll just think he's trying to, I say, Pastor, they whine me. So I get, <laughs> Benefit of having mentors and fathers and mothers that have gone ahead and can provide wisdom and guidance simply cannot be underestimated. Proverbs 22 verse 28 puts it this way, don't remove the ancient landmarks that your fathers have set. The Passion Translation will put it as, the previous generation have put boundaries in place. Don't you dare move them to benefit yourself. The late Stella Obasanjo was going to come to church and pastor has said to me, go prepare this song. So we did the song and while I was ministering on stage, I knew that this was what I was meant to do. That wasn't jazz. I knew by the spirit. And then that sent me into a journey season. So I went back, told my pastor, and then I cut away from every group. Pastor, I can see it now. Mm. I can see clearly the things you are saying. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it like I, I can see it. Please pray for me. Mm. Please mm. pray mm. for me. I can mm. see it. It is good that your eyes are open. It is good. I'll pray for you because I believe in you and I believe in what God is doing in your life. Nathaniel, receive the grace of God to hear from God. I release upon your life greatness that the greatness of God inside of you will come out. The world is waiting for your manifestation, Natalia. And your songs and the sound of your trumpet will be heard all over the world. That the songs of heaven will go through. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how, how this is going to sound. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to battle with you guys. I'm, I quit. What do you mean you're not going to Berkeley? What is he saying? You are not. What do you mean you are not going to Berkeley? Guys, try and understand. That's this is not about me. I'm not going to Berkeley again. How can you not go to Berkeley again? This is just the best. And nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. This one. 
Before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Nathaniel Blue. in life we make bold and daring decisions in our pursuit of the Lord and we think that people will rally around us to celebrate and champion us and those decisions and that may simply not be the case we may be misunderstood maybe even persecuted like Matthew 5 says we may lose relationships but we have to remember like Matthew 19 verse 29 says not houses not brothers sisters fathers mothers wives or children Will we give up for the Lord here and not receive a hundred times in addition to eternal life? Let's see how this decision and its aftermath played out in the life of this character. I was going to church. A man who had never called me, I was driving my Kia car, wearing a white shirt. I don't know how he got my number. As I picked up the phone, he said, Thus see the Lord. The hand of God is upon you from today. Conduct yourself accordingly. Goodbye. The mm. So from then on, I knew that God, God's hands were upon me, and I had to set myself to seeking Him. And the rest, they say, is history. <laughs> so I shut down everything, gave myself to praying, and I would just be weeping. I would just weep. I'll have encounters. So I just stood up all through the night. I had a vision, you know, ministering, and as I ministered, there was fires everywhere. So I just began to weep all through the night, weep all through the night. So when I had that encounter and I pulled out, well, it was tough. And there was a time where a, a, a journalist wrote an article. He said, a gift like this is wasting away in a local church and doesn't want to inspire his generation. You know, and of course, um, met him years later and story changed. Tribulation, however, doesn't last forever. Romans 5 tells us tribulation produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because of God's love poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now let's see how hope has translated in the life of our character. Let's see how he met the love of the love life. I mean, PN, as we fondly call him, in an unusual manner, trust him. My local church at that time had an event. It was our anniversary, I remember. Uh, we had invited um, a preacher, Pastor B. Um, and I remember she said, you know, she wanted to travel with her minstrel. I mean, I was asked to be her protocol assistant, you know, during her stay with us. In my looking out for Pastor B, I, you know, I, I, I noticed, um, a good looking young man, I won't I, I mean, yes. You know, when I saw him, you know, I said to myself, hmm, not bad, but you know how it is. You're like, no, don't be distracted. Let's go back to uh, the reason um, why we're here. During the um, conference, I think the only thing we had said to ourselves was maybe just greetings, like, hello, hi, how are you today? And that was it, nothing more than that. So after the conference, you know, I, I get a call from my pastor saying, we needed to have a discussion. I went for the meeting and then I remember when I walked into his office that day and he asked me to sit and I sat and he said, do you know why you're here? I remember I boldly told him, yes, pastor, I do. And he's like, hmm, really? Okay, tell me why. And I told him, sir, it's because of Nathaniel Percy. And he's like, what? How did you know? Did you guys talk? I don't know all of that stuff, but I was like, no, sir. What I didn't tell him was I, I had a dream, you know, um, before the meeting, you know, I mean, it was it was it was a wedding ceremony. PN and I had you know gotten married in that dream. But of course you can't tell your pastor this now. You're just crushing on the guy, you know, already dreaming about marriage. But anyway, I didn't tell him that part. 
So my, my pastor just said, okay, you know what, um, we'll exchange contacts. It was my pastor who gave me his number and gave him my number. So he said, you guys just talk, you know, let me know how things go. So we began talking, I mean, but, you know, just seeing someone in a dream, you know, wasn't enough confirmation for me. So I needed, you know, some more. I needed some more confirmation. I remember um, in my church those days would have like quarterly fast, you know, periods when we fast. So one of those, um, one of those periods that, you know, just fasted and just praying, just asking God to, you know, just confirm further if, you know, he was the one. And we had a, a video during one of those fasting and I remember the pastor who came up to share um, had said, you know, he, he just came up, came on stage and, you know, he was like, okay, it's on your Bible. Please turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. And I read, and Nathaniel proposed in his heart. Sorry, I'll take it again. And Nathaniel proposed in his heart that he would not. Technical. Why am I? What's going on? Why am I reading Nathaniel? I don't know. I will take it again. I'll take it again. And Nathaniel proposed in his heart. Ha, praise the Lord. I perceive in my spirit that this is a word for someone here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I mean, this is just one of several other confirmations that I had back then, and I guess the rest of see is history. Let's look at how he was entrusted to pastor a young adults church. So this is what the plan looks like. It comes to about $50,000. I'd like to know what to think about it. Excellent structure. Thank you, Mr. Namdi, for your presentation. I will deliberate on it and get back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I know, I know, I know, I know that his life has just begun, but this is one great example of a young adult who's allowed even his youthful days to be a living Bible to those around him. The Bible says not to despise the day of small beginnings, of early beginnings, for God delights in that. How are you living your life? Let's see how God has opened great doors and trusted him to bring and usher in the presence of heaven in worship, both locally and internationally. Someone's knocking at the door. Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? He's been knocking. He's been knocking for so long Can you hear him knocking? Are we live? Yes, sir. We are live. Okay. Uh, as we are all aware, we have just concluded the, the tongue challenge, which was for 30 days, an hour every night. But right now, we are having something different, something new, the Hallelujah Challenge. So, and this has um, precedence from the book of Revelations 19, verse 1. I'll read it quickly. All right, so Revelations 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Somebody, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah for the Lord God and in Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah for the Lord God, 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory be. Give some thanks to you and all. 